You're probably thinking this video is about the brand new AI synth plugin that recently had a hype because you could load your own samples into it and then it would create a preset based on that. But what if I tell you that what I'm about to show you uses a way simpler AI and works with pretty much any synth that can load wavetables into it. When you want to remake a synth sound accurately, there's four factors you have to consider. We have the envelope shape, which is how the sound behaves over time. We have the frequency content or timbre, which is what you see on the EQ. We have the filter envelope, which is not relevant for every sound, but only for those that have a moving filter, such as a plug. And finally, we have the stereo width, meaning how wide a sound is. Which of those four do you think is the hardest to recreate? It's that tonal characteristic that makes you go, oh wow, that sounds like the real preset. Whenever you recreate a synth, starting with the wrong waveform can make the later process, such as filtering and processing, extremely difficult. Now there's a technique where you basically draw the wavetable yourself until the frequency matches the spectrum but it's pretty time consuming and difficult, so I personally only use this if there's no other way. Luckily, there's an easier way. So let me show you the AI tool we're gonna use for this. It's Audio Strip. Wait, isn't Audio Strip just a stem separation tool? No, it's the best one. I know this is not what you expected, but let me show you how you can use this tool in a way you probably even haven't thought of. I wanna remake this trance bass sound here from Desire by Calvin Harris. So let's take the song and throw it into audio strip. We're gonna select the VB splits algorithm and split it into four stems. Vocals, drums, bass and other. Next we're gonna open the bass stem in FL Studio's audio editor and find the section where the bass is as clean as possible. And what you see right here is the hardest part about recreating your synth. It's the waveform or frequency spectrum and we can simply take it. Let's select a few cycles of the waveform so we have some options, drag them into Edison again and turn it into mono. Now we can save it and load it into Serum's wavetable editor by typing in the note of the bass we sampled and drag it into the window. Now let's give our sampled wavetable bass a listen. This might not sound very impressive, but remember I said there are four factors you have to consider when recreating a sound and we already have the hardest one done. So let's tackle the other three. The original bass is really plucky, so we need a plucky envelope shape and also a filter that is controlled by the envelope shape. Now we only need to make sure the stereo width is also right. The original bass has some width to it, so let's copy our oscillator A to oscillator B, give it some voices of unison and adjust the level. We can also add a little bit of chorus to it. Let's play Play that back. Most of the sound is now there, but it actually sounds pretty weak, so we need to beef it up with some processing. And the attack isn't punching enough, therefore we can add some multiband distortion and OTT. It's not exactly the same, but it's really close and the best thing about this, you now have your own version of that desire bass which you can use in your own songs. When you remake sounds, there's never just one way to do it, but rather a few methods that you can always try and you now have a new one you can try out. Obviously this doesn't work with any sound and depends on how clean you can isolate the individual sound that you sample the waveform from. Anyway, I hope you find this video interesting, so thanks for watching and we'll see each other in the next video.